In today's tutorial, I will walk you through the fun process of shooting and editing a smooth zoom effect like this using pretty much any object. To pull this off, you will need three different clips. Start with a video of yourself throwing an object upwards and catching it. And here are a few important tips. Film a wide shot against a plain, solid colored background. The simpler it is, the better. Choose an object that really pops against the background. Clear edges will make your life easier when it's time for masking in post-production. Try not to spin the object too much and throw it away from your face and body to make sure there is enough clear space around it. Don't be afraid to do this multiple times so you can have more options to choose from. Once you've got your takes, review the footage to find that perfect throw for the video. For instance, in my video, I wanted the Pokeball to face the camera when it's paused in mid-air. This frame is so important, so make sure you save it and I will explain why in a minute. Without moving the camera, you can now record a short video of just the background and trust me, this will be really useful during editing. Let's now focus on the close-up shot of the object. Bring your camera closer and using the frame you saved as a reference, make sure the object's angle, camera's perspective, and lighting match the wide angle shot. You can keep the same background or use a green screen if you have one. To make this effect even more believable, it's a good idea to add a bit of movement. For instance, here we used blue tag and a slow moving turntable for some added motion. Big thanks to my buddy Bap who came up with this whole idea and let me use his studio and gear for the video. And by the way, if you want to avoid ugly reflections, like the ones we had here, it's better if you choose an item with a matte surface. Once you've wrapped up the shoot, it's time to start editing. And hey, for those of you who are subscribed to my Patreon, don't forget to grab the project files so you can follow along using the same clips. Start by importing the three clips over to After Effects, drag and drop them over here to create a new composition and click OK. Next, go to Composition Settings, set the start time code to zero, and set a duration for the final video. I'm gonna go with 5 seconds. Make sure the clips are arranged in this order in the composition. Let's go ahead and hide the close-up for now. The wide video includes several takes, so I'm gonna slide it back in the timeline to find the perfect start, preferably a few moments before the throw. Let's move forward and decide where we want to end the video. Press Ctrl, Shift and D to break the layer and delete the second clip. Next, turn all three layers into 3D. We don't need the audio from these clips, so let's disable it. Also, it's very important that you enable motion blur on all three layers Look for the moment where the object reaches the highest point in the video. In other words, find the frame where the object stops mid-air and looks really sharp. This is going to be a reference point for several actions throughout the edit, so to make it easier to find, you can mark it by pressing the star button. Now unhide the close-up video, select the anchor point tool and move the anchor point to the center of your subject. Now obviously we will need to remove the background from the close-up clip. You can use the ellipse tool for round objects like this or the pen tool for more complex shapes. Hide the wide angle video and draw a mask around the object. You can then adjust its shape and position. Use the pen tool to add vertex points for more precise adjustments. And depending on your object's shape, it may be a good idea to create additional masks to reveal certain parts. However, I will only use one mask here to keep the process simple. While the selection looks pretty good, the edges may look very sharp, which can appear unrealistic, especially if there is depth of field in your footage. To fix this, open the mask properties, reduce the mask expansion and slightly increase the feather. This adjustment will make the mask look much more realistic. If you've rotated the object during the shoot like we did, make sure the clip starts at the right moment. In this case, it's when the angle matches the reference frame. And because the object is moving, you might need to animate the mask over time. And to do that, enable the stopwatch on the mask path. If the object shifts position at any moment, simply realign the mask path to follow it. Now let's unhide the wide shot, select the close-up clip, Press T to display its opacity and reduce it to 50% to be able to see the layer underneath it. Return to the marked frame, then move the object and adjust its scale to match the original video. You can make the close-up version slightly bigger to ensure it entirely covers the one beneath it. After this, open the transform properties of the close-up clip and activate keyframing on position, scale and orientation. Now begin going backwards and align the object with its position in the wide shot. 
lot. I'm gonna do this every two frames, but depending on your object speed and trajectory, you might need to do it frame by frame. If you're new to After Effects and computer animation, these keyframes serve to fix the object's properties at specific moments, and creating different keyframes with varying values is what generates motion over time. If you're interested in learning the basic rules of animation and getting started with After Effects, I recommend this class on Skillshare. I will leave a link to it in the description, and the first 500 people to click on it will gain free access to the entire class library for a whole month. Continue this process until the motion blur appears significantly high. At this point, you can split the close-up video and delete the first clip, restore the opacity of the close-up layer to 100%, and as a result, the transition to the close-up is barely noticeable thanks to the speed and motion blur. Now, once again, move the time indicator to the marker, break the layer, Let's rename the first clip to up and the second clip to down so we can easily tell them apart. I'm going to push the down clip about two seconds further in the timeline. You can go with more or less. It depends on how long you want to leave the object hovering before it drops, during which I'm going to add some motion to make it a little more interesting. Open the layers properties. You can increase the size just a bit and adjust the rotation but make sure you don't overdo this. I think this looks good enough, except that it ends abruptly. So let's select both keyframes and press F9 to ease the stop and smoothen the movement towards the end. Let's also add a second marker here. Once again, reduce the close-ups opacity to 50%. And as you can see, the scale is now way off and we certainly need to fix that. Select the white shot, move the anchor point to the center of the smaller object, and this time, adjust the position and scale of the white clip to match the close-up. Once you've completed those steps, select the close-up, add a position keyframe, and move the close-up over time to align it with the path and speed of the object. I think you can also reduce the size towards the end, find a moment where the motion blur is really high and break the close-up clip, delete the second part. And as you can see, the cut here looks pretty convincing, but when you restore the opacity to 100%, you might notice the position being slightly off at certain moments, so double check if you need to add keyframes or if any of the existing ones requires further adjustment. By now, you should be ready to proceed to the the next part of the edit, the zoom animation. And if you're finding this video helpful, your subscription would be greatly appreciated. To create the zoom animation, go to layer, new, and add a camera. Change the camera type to one node and click OK. Determine where you want the camera animation to start. I recommend doing this a few frames before the throw motion begins. Open the camera's transform properties and add a position keyframe. A few frames after the first marker, use the camera tools to move the camera closer to the object and adjust the angle. If you play the animation now, you will notice the camera movement is abrupt and needs some more work. So select both keyframes and press F9 to ease the speed. Now open the graph editor and here you can adjust the graph for more control over the zoom acceleration and its overall speed. There's no exact formula for this. You can try to replicate the shape of this graph, but also experiment until the camera movement appears natural. I'm actually quite satisfied with this, so I will close the graph editor. If you look closely, you will notice a distinct cut when we transition from the wide frame to the background video. We can add a crossfade to make the transition more seamless. Select the clip. Navigate to layer, then time, and click on freeze on last frame. Shorten the clip towards the end of the camera animation. And just as my hand is about to disappear, I will open the layer's opacity, add a keyframe, move a few frames forward, and reduce the opacity down to zero. And as you can see, it's a small adjustment that significantly improves the transition. And now it's time to work on the zoom out. A few frames before the second marker, Add a keyframe to the camera's position, move a few moments after the close-up clip ends, and adjust the camera's position to restore the wide angle. The result doesn't look bad at all, but you can use the graph editor to adjust the speed and smoothen the motion further, which will make a really big difference. We're not finished with the video yet. First, double check the subject's position to make sure it doesn't shift over time. And if you followed my tips regarding spinning the object during the shoot and want your video to look even more professional than it is, you can enhance the zoom out part even more. At the start of it, select the close up, navigate to layer, time, enable time remapping, and add a time keyframe. 
Towards the end of the clip, increase the time code to speed up the spinning. Select the first time keyframe, press F9, open the graph editor, decrease the acceleration at the start and maximize the speed towards the end. This creates a speed ramp effect as the object drops, which complements the zoom out really nicely. Since we've increased the speed, the position of the ball might shift from its mask position. Make sure to realign it for a cleaner look. Now, similarly to what we did with the zoom in, select the down clip, freeze it on the last frame and extend the clip towards the beginning of the zoom out. Add an opacity keyframe, go back a few moments and reduce it to zero. To personalize your video, consider using Lumetri effect for color grading. The project files on Patreon will also include the Pokeball effect for you to experiment with. Stay creative and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.